I had a ton of fun with Outriders around its April release, but some issues and a lack of post-launch content kind of killed the fun for me after some time. Well, surprise, because on November 16th, we're getting a brand new Outriders update with new expedition maps, many new features, buffs and changes, and they also announced a big expansion for 2022, which looks pretty interesting, but we got no new info on that today. But, Dennis, hey, welcome. You were able to play the New Horizons content already, right? And one thing stood out, mostly that it's just a breath of fresh air looking at some other recent games. Yeah, for sure. And I think where that shows the most is the new transmog system that they're going to be introducing in this update. And I think it's pretty safe to say that it's one of the most generous transmog systems we've seen. There are very few limitations or costs associated with it. Basically, as soon as you grab an item for the first time, you unlock that skin in your transmog menu and you can then apply that skin to any other item of the same category. So assault rifle skins on assault rifles, headgear on headgear, you know, that kind of makes sense. And that is at no material cost whatsoever. You can do it at any moment. And what's also good to know is that your transmog library, so all of the skins you unlock, are shared between all of your characters. Nice, nice. Now, let's make that even better because <laughs> there's more. Uh, if you have a full armor set unlocked, like you have a legendary set for your Pyromancer that you think is really cool, you can then instantly apply the look of that entire set to anything you're wearing at the moment. So you just press one button and then you change to the entire look of that armor set. That even works for other classes, which is something that I tried in my play session. I was playing as a trickster, but I felt like that Pyro armor looks really cool. I'm going to put that on. One simple press of a button and I now look like that, which is amazing. And then for weapons, it doesn't only change how the weapon looks, but also how it sounds. So they even thought of that. So there's a lot you can do. And really, it's really cool. Super simple to use. Yeah, comparing this to Valhalla, which we of course play a lot still as well, where you have to go to the settlement each time you want to change something. You have to pay 50 in-game silver, like the in-game currency, to change one thing. When you get a new item, like... You cannot immediately put that look over the gear you're currently wearing. In Odyssey, where we did have that change on the fly system, which we are kind of seeing now in Outriders, I was like changing my look of my character like way more often. So it's really cool to see that Outriders is more similar to that. And it's especially a huge step up from another looter, right, Dennis? That also yes. had a transmog system recently. The Destiny transmog system, of course. People weren't very happy with that one. Uh, in case you didn't know, the way that that basically works is you have to, again, with in-game currencies, buy a bounty, then complete that, and then you can unlock a single piece of armor for transmog. But there's also a cap on how many you can earn in a season. Oh. And when you put that next to Outriders... <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty clear that, that we have a winner, right? And I like how during the broadcast, they were also like, hey, we made some mistakes at launch. We're now here to fix it based on player feedback. And we will go over some more quality of life improvements in a moment. But first, I want to talk about the most exciting addition of this new update, the four new expedition maps. And you were already able to play them, right, Dennis? How did you like them? I did like them very much. So like you said, there are four new ones. City of Nomads, Marshall's Complex, Molten Depths, and The Wellspring. Uh, now, how to play all of these, basically you unlock the Molten Depths, the first one of them, when you reach the Expeditions. And then you have to go through the Mastery Tier system to unlock the, the other ones at levels 4, 8 and 12. And I do feel like these are a step up from the Expeditions in the main game, mostly because it feels like there's just more happening in the map. Like, I was playing the Wellspring, and then after you progress a bit, this crazy dust storm comes in, which starts obscuring your vision. At the end of the Molten Depths, also something really cool happens, because then you fight a beefed-up version of the Lava Spider. You might remember that guy from the main game. Yeah, yeah, yeah for which sure. Which is really cool. <laughs> and just in general, the maps feel more distinct and unique from what I remember from the main game. And there also seem to be some secrets hidden. Like, the only one I was able to find was a weird telephone at the end of one of the missions, which when you pick it up, you get teleported somewhere else. Still not sure what that's about, but at least the thought of more of these secrets appearing in the maps is very exciting because that will also reward exploration more, which is not really something we had before. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds very, very interesting. And this comes yeah, next to like a ton of changes. And one of the things we see usually in looters is that when something is too overpowered, they nerf it to the ground. Outriders is taking a pretty interesting different approach, right? Exactly. In, in fact, it's the exact opposite approach <laughs> because one of the developers literally mentioned that our focus is on buffing and not nerfing, which, like you said, 
very refreshing because most of the time when something's overpowered it either stays untouched or gets nerfed now i just does of course have the benefit of not having a pvp system to balance but i still think it's gonna do the game well that the developers are gonna focus on making all the items and abilities as strong as the strongest ones instead of making the stronger ones weaker to have a uh, better balance mm -hmm. across the board and also like you already mentioned there are a ton of smaller quality of life changes some of which will help with getting that cool loot as well that will now have received buff like Thiago, the legendary gear vendor received some changes which will make it even easier for you to get the legendaries that you want longer expeditions now give more rewards so you don't feel like you're wasting your time because before you kind of wanted to do the quickest ones because time invested didn't really matter so on the note of expedition rewards the final expedition eye of the storm now gives you a selection of three legendaries from which you can pick one kind of like how mission rewards work oh nice and there's also duplication protection in place which makes sure that you are less likely to get a uh, a duplicate item so one that you already have there are also new skins that you can earn from these new expeditions. The Ruiner weapon skins. We already found them in the in the playthrough, so you can kind of already see them here. And of course, when someone mentions new weapons, we have to ask, are there going to be new legendary uh, weapons as well? We did ask that, but the developers made it very clear that the new Horizon update is only meant to improve on what is already here, not to expand on it. And then finally, uh, which is also a relatively big change, is the timer on expeditions has been removed. Developers specifically stated that they wanted to sort of shift away from the DPS meta right now, because if you have to go through something fast, you want as much damage as possible. So they removed the timer to allow for more build variety, which I think is a great move. Yeah, for sure. And of course, around launch, there were also some multiplayer problems. They now note that crossplay should be fixed across all the different platforms, which is great. And I'm sure they will drop like patch notes with way more. But this really feels like a sort of relaunch of the game in a way. And I'm really happy that they put the resources behind that. Because they could have just walked away and called it a day. But no, seems like they're sticking uh, for the long haul. And we of course have that big expansion. Again, no info on that yet. It looks very interesting. We saw some new enemies, I think, right, Dennis? Um, yeah, that was looking good to me. Yeah, so uh, can't wait to, to check that out. But... Yeah, will already be fun to jump back into Outriders again. The update is live November 16th, maybe already by the time you watch this. Should be like 6 p.m. Central European time, so you can calculate that to your region. I think that is when the update goes live, or you can, of course, check the Outriders Twitter for that. Subscribe for more Outriders content and general gaming content. If you enjoyed the video, of course, a like would really help me out. And check out our previous video as well. By clicking on the screen, let me know what you think of the new Outriders news in the comments down below. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.